What's going on guys? So today I am out here at the Texas Pride Tilt Trailer and we're going to do something really special. I know I'm going to get some flack over it. I hope not, but I know it is what it is. Anyways guys, today we are taking a look at the coupler. As you all know, I recently installed this Bulldog Auto Coupler. It's an auto latching coupler. It basically replaced the factory coupler that was in there and this one automatically latches to the ball in my truck whenever I lower the trailer onto the ball. Now this is a cool coupler, but it does not have a feature that a certain coupler does have on the market. And they were kind enough to send me one for review and evaluation. I don't want to show it to you today. So hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So you were looking at the Gen Y Spartan gooseneck coupler. This is really cool. What's special about this is it has suspension built into it. It has a torsion style suspension system. Very similar to torsion suspension you might see on the axles of a trailer. Basically, there's four rubber beads or bars that run across the inside of this tube, all four of these, and then in the center of it is essentially a square shaped bar. And as that square shaped bar rotates, it puts pressure against the rubber bands that go around it, which creates torsion. And that torsion essentially creates a suspension system, which again is very popular on some types of trailers for its main suspension system. But Gen Y has incorporated that technology into all sorts of different types of hitches, from bumper pole hitches to fifth wheel hitches and they even have one available now as a replacement for a fifth wheel hitch. So you can get their executive series, which essentially replaces the pin box on your fifth wheel with either a traditional fifth wheel style kingpin that utilizes this suspension or a gooseneck connection similar to the Reese goose box. Now, I know the number one question people may ask is, is it approved by Lippert for use on their frames? Unfortunately, Lippert's not approving a lot of different hitches for use on their frames right now, mainly because they're doing some development of their own and I don't know if it's for competitive reasons but there just aren't a lot of opportunities now for new manufacturers or manufacturers of different products to get their products approved on Lippert frames. This specific setup on a fifth wheel if you get the pin box replacement is very similar in mounting design to your traditional pin box. So it doesn't create the same type of leverage and force that a gooseneck style adapter would on a kingpin on your traditional pin box. It doesn't create that moment arm and because you don't have that, you're creating less leverage on the front portion of the frame of the fifth wheel. That being said, we're here to talk about this Spartan gooseneck coupler replacement. This is really cool. This specific one has a maximum tongue weight capacity of 4,500 pounds and a maximum towing capacity of 25,000 pounds. So this thing is a beast and they have this in several different sizes and several different ratings based on the tongue weight requirements and the towing requirements. And what's different between them is really the width of this rubber bead inside of this tube. If you get the lighter capacity models, they tend to be a little bit narrower, thus making the entire assembly a little bit lighter. But that's simply because you don't need quite the resistance that you would need with something that has a 4,500 pound tongue weight capacity or higher. And I know these things go all the way up to, I think, 7,000 pounds. So they really have these for just about all gooseneck applications. But today we're going to install this specific one. This is the GH-74. 42, 4,500 pound tongue weight capacity, 25,000 pound towing capacity. And this is going to be essentially a replacement slide in coupler to what's already on the trailer. So let's go ahead and get this pinned in place. This weighs 110 pounds. So I don't recommend you coming out here and trying to do it by yourself. And it's kind of awkward weight. It's very heavy towards this section, whereas the upper section is relatively light. So you definitely want to have a helper out here to at least put the pin in place and to hold it in place until you're ready to clamp it down with the set screws. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is measure from the bottom of this coupler to where it meets or where it ends inside of the trailer here so we understand what height we have between the fifth wheel and the bed of the truck. Looks like we're right at 11 inches. So now let's go over to the Spartan coupler and see what that measurement looks like and what hole that's going to put this in. Okay, so now we're going to measure the Spartan hitch. 11 inches from the bottom of the coupler is going to put us about 2 inches shy of the mounting hole, which is gonna be this very bottom hole. And like a lot of new gooseneck trailers, the mounting hole is actually at an angle. It's not a straight through hole. So we're gonna be using this very bottom connection right here to mount it. Now, Gen Y says that you should mount this about two inches lower than 
a standard gooseneck hitch coupler simply because once you put the weight on it, you need room for these torsion arms to essentially flex down. So that's one of the reasons why it will sit a little high when you're empty, but then when, once you put weight on it, it's going to put the weight on these torsion arms, which will then compress down and you should be sitting relatively flat under load. Okay, I suppose we could have set up a tripod, so you could have seen us strain to put this thing in place, but essentially it's two people. One person to carry it over, kind of get it ready. The other person to hold it, brace it, and get ready to pop the pin in. And then you got to make sure that the inside of the tube here is smooth enough that it goes smoothly inside. But that is what it looks like installed on the trailer. It's a really cool setup. Now, they used to have an autocoupler. So... In the past, they had a little spring here that would allow it to drop down, connect, and disconnect. They switched to a pinned style connection here. So basically a pin goes into this spot right here and locks in place. So that is a little bit different than the Bulldog. Um, what I love about this is just the suspension. The fact that this has built in torsion right here. Another thing I really like about it is the fact that it spaces the truck, I believe about six inches further from this back toolbox area of the trailer by positioning the coupler head ahead of the actual gooseneck. So that's really nice. But you can see how this essentially works. It's called Torsion Flex Technology by Gen Y. That is a cool setup. And these range in price anywhere between about $900 to $1,000. I think $899 all the way up to $999. This is a very, very cool setup. I can't wait to use it. To use it, of course, I'm going to have to load something pretty heavy on the back of the truck. But we'll go ahead and get it hitched up to the truck to see if the tongue weight, or at least the pin weight, of this gooseneck trailer compresses these at all, which it probably won't. Something else that's really cool is they put a scale on here. So you have a little white line right here, and when you don't have any weight on it, it's going to be right at the bottom. As you load weight on it, it's essentially going to show you how much weight you're transferring to the actual hitch head itself, which is really cool. Anyways, let's get the rest of this unwrapped. Let's get the truck backed up to it, hook this up, and see if we see any movement at all in these torsion arms. Now what I'll tell you I really like about this setup is how much room I now have between the tailgate and the toolbox. This is roughly twice as much room as I had before. Without that coupler on here, I was about this much closer. But it's definitely more comfortable if you need to be between this certain area here, especially if you're accessing anything in your front toolbox or on your pumper batteries. But we're coupled up. Let me show you how this pin goes into place. This is a little bit different for me, and I haven't used this type of a setup before. I usually have the kind that springs down, or like on the Bulldog system, the kind that has the auto latching. But we'll see how easy or complex this is. I'm going to throw this back there, hop in the truck. Okay, so I am here in the back of the truck, and to get coupled up, I need to insert the pin through here. And then, fortunately, you can just kind of press this forward and it latches around. I would say that's my only gripe with this setup. I love everything about it except the process of pinning it to your goose ball. I would really prefer the auto latch system because it just makes things a lot easier. And you don't have to climb into the center because right now I'm in the bed of my truck. Typically, I can kind of do everything from the side of my truck. I would really prefer an auto latch right there, and that would really make this setup perfect. I know that some people had some issues with the auto latch, and I guess the spacing around the suspension or something to do with the coupler. In my opinion, I would probably deal with it just to have the auto latch. But aside from that, this is a really cool looking setup. It did compress slightly. So it looks like this definitely settled down a little bit. Let's take a shot from the outside so you see how the trailer's sitting in correlation to the truck. Now, you may have noticed I went back to my Reese ball because the Reese ball sits 
about an inch lower than the B&W ball that I had in here. And my goal is to try to get as level as possible with this hitch in place since the hitch does protrude down off of the bottom of the gooseneck an additional two inches over what the Bulldog or the factory coupler did. All right, so you can see that the front landing gear are off the ground. The trailer is squatting back a little bit. It's not too terribly much and it looks relatively level. So I could imagine once you put some weight on the back of the trailer, it's gonna level out because of the torsion suspension on the Gen Y hitch. Overall though, it's a really nice setup and I can't wait to load the trailer up. We have some videos coming up, so subscribe if you haven't had a chance because we're gonna be loading some pretty heavy equipment on the back of this trailer for testing. And anything that goes above the 7,500 pound payload capacity I have for my D-rated trailer, we're gonna be doing off-road. So we're not gonna be pulling anything that's overweight for this trailer down the highway. Again, the trailer was built to be able to hold about 15,000 pounds, but we D-rated it to about 7,000 pounds, which is is again comparable to a 12,000 pound GVWR trailer. So whenever we load this thing up to 14, 15,000 pounds for testing, we're gonna do it on a private environment, private road to where we're not gonna be pulling it down public roadways. And the trailer again is built for that type of weight. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how the Gen Y hitch performs under those conditions. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, check out the description of this video if you wanna know more information about the Gen Y hitch. That is such a cool product. It's the Spartan series. And this is the 4,500 pound tongue weight rated and the 25,000 pound trailer weight rated hitch that they have. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.